All right, everybody, welcome to Word on the Street, episode 77, powered by Lean Solutions Group. I'm Trey Griggs here with the crew, starting off today with Coleman and Kyle. What's up, fellas? How you guys doing? How's it going? I was going to say, a little jealous of Kyle being outside right now. It's a little chilly over here. I know. He's got uh, he's got the view for sure, um, taking, taking advantage of that weather. We were just talking about that right before we came on the air. Uh, nice to have that kind of last final hot stretch for us, you know, kind of Midwest, uh, you know, 30th, uh, 35th uh, parallel type of folks uh, who are going to have that super hot weather much longer, which is really, really nice. So um, I think the highs here in Missouri are going to be basically after this week, like 70s and, and never really getting above that, which is which is perfect weather for a while, which we had it longer, but uh, yeah. not too What's long, it? What's so. it drop to at night out by y'all? Uh, in Missouri, it gets down right now within the 50s, yeah. um, you know, and, and and so it's not too bad. You know, you wake up, it's got that cool, crisp air, but it's not cold. Yep. You know, like you can go running with shorts and a shirt if you want, but you're just a little chilly. Yep. Um, it's like my, it's my favorite, my favorite weather is right now. Oh, yeah. That. It gets 40 here in Mass, like 40, 30. It gets cold. Like, don't get me wrong. You wake wow. up and you're like, all right, I'm willing to kind of stay in bed a little bit. But I mean, yeah, like you said, this, <laughs> is, this is the time to be in New England. Like the upper foliage, 30s. Though, if you upper notice, the foliage right. isn't great right now. Yeah. Not know, good. But upper, <laughs> upper 30s at this time of year is actually pretty cold. Like that feels pretty oh, yeah. cold. Upper 30s, like in, you know, February. Hey, we're getting somewhere. We're moving <laughs> in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, lived so, it all changes a little bit. But no, it's nice to be on this side of uh, of the of the summer uh, stretch for sure. And then if fall, of course, like you know, if you've got if you've got deciduous trees, um, it's it's nice having you know leaves that uh, you know change colors and uh, not fun to pick up, but beautiful for about you know three weeks before they fall. So. I was going to say that's one of the big things in my backyard. We've got a beautiful ash tree, and then it's great yeah. when it changes colors, but you're breaking leaves for like four weeks straight. It's terrible. <laughs> well, this year I'm, ex- I'm I'm especially excited this year because we cut down three massive oak trees. So I've got three trees. I don't have to worry about the leaves, but I still have three others that are that are significant. So it's still good. like last year. I think I did like sixty bags of leaves to get it all Ooh. over over the course over the course of the season, not all at one time. But over the yeah. course. I- but this I year I'm hoping don't have a leaf over here. So like I have to rake all these leaves and like, yeah. I've got all the woods yeah. right there. I'm like, I've tried, I thought last year I was getting one. The wife promised me. And then all of a sudden <laughs> no leaf blower. Leaf, and I'm leaf, sitting there raking. Like what the heck happened? Leaf blower is good. Um, but I actually prefer to rake them. I just feel like it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of fun until my hands are done. It's pretty fun. Aaron, what's up? Yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? It's so Hi. good to see you. I was connecting with you on uh, on LinkedIn. I think it was this week, and uh, you said you're going to be there. I was like so excited to hear that. And yeah. Diana, how are you? Diana has turned a corner. Everybody, listen. Let me just say, Diana is now you know like camera on every week. You know she's got the office setting, got the nice tiled ceiling behind her. I mean, we've really turned a corner here, Diana. I'm very <laughs> so professional, so professional. Right? Listen, look at me moving on up in this world, y'all. Moving on up. Moving on up. How's the new yeah. gig? Is it going well? It is. It is going well. Good. I'm trying to, you know, get things get things moving here because you know when it comes to like a. Well, y'all know more than anybody when it comes to trucking, you know, they like to, to keep things old school and, you know, trying to try to yeah. make things new school or, you know, try something different. It's a, it's a little challenging. Yeah, no doubt about it. Technology is, um, is, is it's a little bit slower in the trucking world than probably any other segment of the supply chain um, yeah. for some for, for one reason or another. And I think it mainly is just because of the people that typically are involved in trucking. Um, they just may not see it as, as important for being able to do their business. Whereas other aspects, I think require technology or make it much more efficient. So it's right, interesting. Exactly. And then a lot yeah. of them have been here for like 30, 30 plus years. And, you know, I don't know if they're afraid yeah. of change, but. Uh, well, yeah. you know, it'll be interesting as, you know, cause I mean, you think about the evolution of trucking, you know, it really, it was deregulated in the late seventies. And then you started to see companies start to bring, you know, um, uh, come on board like in the eighties and nineties. And a lot of those people, are about to, to jump out of, of the industry. Their sons or daughters are going to take over. It'll be yeah. interesting in the next 10 years to see how trucking changes as this digital native you know, uh, group of leaders start to take over those companies and how they change or if they change. Um, right. I do think we're going to see some whole scale change when that happens um, over the next I 10 years. So I think you're already right. seeing it, really. Um, sure. Oh, yeah, you know, it started. 
if we sure. look at uh like you know even my generation you know as much as i hate to identify as a millennial but you know we brought oh, but you are <laughs> i am i am right on the cusp Woo! uh yeah. but, you know like my generation brought in like reliance on tech you know like freight doesn't run on paper for most companies anymore you know it runs on tmss with trailer tracking and fleet management and yeah. RFIDs at ports and all that stuff, you know, the, the technology, the technological transformation of trucking is in process and has already happened. So the companies that are still sitting on the sidelines, they're not really helping themselves because they're not competing where they need to compete. That's a good point, but what's the reason for that? And I think I know, but what do you guys think is the reason for why the whole trucking industry, not just certain segments, has had this transformation? Because the trucking industry is full of troglodytes. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I was going to use a different word than troglodytes. I had a different word it's in mind. Such a nice flashy word. Come on, it is a nice. It flashy is. Word. It's a much. It's I a agree much with better Nico. word. It is. It's a much better word than I was going to use. Yeah. Um, but but you're probably right. I was actually going to say because there's so many owner operators and independent drivers, small companies. Like you know, you don't you, like think about this. I was I was talking with people at, in uh, the TIA policy forum this week in, in DC, you know, it's, it's much easier to regulate the airline industry because there's only a handful of airline companies out there. You know, I mean, there's, you, you don't see owner operator airlines, but in trucking, you see owner operator, you know, all the time, you see small one to five truck fleets. And those people often don't have the resources to become, you know, technologically advanced in many ways. You certainly see the large companies moving that direction because they've got the resources. They have initiatives to do that. They have incentives to do that. But when you look at some of these small companies that are just trying to get going, I think a lot of times technology is sometimes the last thing on their mind, but it's going to change as digital natives become the truckers moving forward. Did you guys know, by the way, I learned something this week. The average age of truck, of truck drivers is 61 the average age. Not 16? 61. 61. I keep hearing conflicting numbers plus. there. <laughs> well, I've that's heard what 49. I heard. Well, okay. So but let's I've just, heard let's like just split. it's a mean when you look at let's it. Let's split like the, the difference. Right. Let's just See, say it's 54. Okay. okay. You know, that's, that's, that's still not a digital native. No. <laughs> that's still not somebody who thinks in terms of technology, at least not initially. Maybe not all. I mean, I don't want to paint a broad brush, but in generalizing, we're still not in the digital natives in terms of people who are driving the trucks. You know, yeah. we actually really Beefcake talked that. about this last week, like on the on the word on the street, and like we we kind of all kind of said, like at the end of the day, technology, it's different. Like you think of technology to help you, but like when it comes to trucking, it truly is tracking you. Like everything you do, like a lot of times, like the technology we want in a trucking thing is something that like imagine if our jobs are being tracked and they are don't get me wrong we said this in the like, yeah, last I was say. like <laughs> imagine like every single thing you do like we all know that it can technically look at our computers right now and see what we're doing but we also know that it's people doing it and like ah oh, they don't really care but imagine if like technology wasn't there to assist you to do your job as much with trucking and that's kind of where we all were sort of landing on this thing and it's kind of what what's the goal and especially if i'm a person why do you need technology to know what I'm doing? I, I was doing this before. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you're probably right. The technology hasn't been something that necessarily enhances their life. It's probably something that's more or less, um, you know, observed and inspected their life. Uh, but in that technology way, so. also levels the playing field. You look at a company like you, you talked about like small trucking companies, like owner operators, but you know who those people can go to right now really easily with little investment? Valiant, the company that is like killing it with, you know, uh, newer, you know, younger truck drivers because they're all mm. app based. So if you're an owner operator and you have a cell phone and I'm, which who doesn't? Most do. Yeah. You which, can be was, a driver for Valiant. Yeah. And that's funny because that used to be, I remember when I sold tracking solutions, that used to be the big thing was, well, these drivers say they don't even have a phone. I'm like, you really think that a driver doesn't have a smartphone? Or do you think they're telling you that they don't have a smartphone? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, who, who doesn't have I mean, a smartphone? There are some that don't. Know? Yeah, there's some, but it is, like, but it's got to be, it's very limited. I will say that. Is. I mean, it's very, they probably have two phones. They probably have the flip phone 
and they have the smartphone, right? And they're not giving you the smartphone number. They're giving you the flip phone number and saying, look really it up. It's a flip deal phone. with somebody who doesn't have a smartphone? I mean, no. I mean, I, I, would, I would probably <laughs> hey, say in this, I in this day and age, those no. people. Yeah. I, had a, yeah, I actually had a mail out an application. How great are they at filling out forms that you need them to fill out? Not, yeah, not just click on the email. I'm going to send you on your phone and fill it out. I can't do yeah. that. I go, okay. Really no. good at doing their own taxes, though. That's for sure. Yep. <laughs> hey, Rob, welcome. How are hey. you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing great. It's been a while since I've been able to jump in there. So I I looked at the clock and I was like, 12 oh, wait, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Rob, listen, you're going to be, I've got something special for you today, my friend. I'm glad you're here. I, I was hoping that you would be here today, but you're going to have to wait till the end. So we'll have a good time towards the end, but I'm super glad that you're here. So don't jump off early, my friend. All right. You're going to appreciate this. So, um, or jump off early and make sure you come back for the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Exactly. Exactly. The last five, 10 minutes is going to be, is going to be beneficial for you. Uh, or maybe for me, I'm not sure which, but we'll find out. All right. So let's transition real quick and talk about some of the things that have been going on lately. I mean, so just this week, uh, another huge M&A um, story that broke. Uh, we tell Arc Best acquiring Molo Solutions after, you know, Molo's only been in the business four years and uh, got bought for 235 million. So hats off to uh, Andrew Silver and Will Jenkins, the entire Molo team. Uh, congratulations to them. What I love about Molo, I, I wanted to talk about this because I think sometimes this gets lost in all of it. What I love about Molo is that at least from an outward appearance, from a, uh, you know, a, a messaging appearance, it doesn't appear that they cut any corners, you know, that they were really trying to make customer experience the focus, you know, and, and at, at all costs. At whatever cost it took, customer experience was going to be the focus. And in doing so, looking back, it appears that strategy was really helpful. You know, that, 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 was, that, that was beneficial. That they won as a result of that. And I wonder how that's going to impact other companies moving forward that often think of customer experience, you know, secondary or tertiary in terms of the priorities. Um, you know, Molo made it first, appeared to make it first, um, and still pushed that envelope and had a ton of transparency about it, too. They weren't afraid to talk about where they messed up or talk about when they, when they, you know, did well. Uh, that was pretty fascinating. what did you guys think about that when you heard that? I thought it was a great acquisition by Arc Best personally. I mean, they, it, from my understanding of the market, they had a brokerage. It was, it was good, but they needed something to kickstart it. And Mola was to your point doing phenomenal things. So why not bring them under that umbrella to really help not only the asset side, but Hey, kickstart that brokerage. But I mean, being a customer centric organization feels like a no brainer. Right. And it's just they were really vocal about it and and publicized it, which I think helped everything that they were doing. Yeah, Arc, no, Arc I agree Best with that. Arc Best definitely needed them. I think they wanted did. Andrew Silver and uh, and that's what they paid to get it. So I yeah, mean, did. It, he's he's sort of I won't say doing damage control, but he's he's trying to make sure people know that we're not going to, you know, we're not separating the Molo thing. It's not going to be dissolved. Right, right. I, didn't, I didn't just take a big cash payout to to make all the money I'll ever need in my life. I'm still yeah. invested in this. And the, and I think he's going to still want to try to keep the Molo name in there as a, as a yeah. subsidiary well, thereof. His LinkedIn is fun right now for how much yeah. he's like, yep, this is <laughs> yeah. what I am. Don't no, swear. I <laughs> promise all this stuff. Like, all right, I okay. swear. Yeah. I'm not just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, um, did you guys, did you guys read the open letter that he wrote about why, he, why they did it? Yes. Did any of you guys read that? I thought I that was really. I loved that letter. Yeah. I thought it was really well written. Uh, I'm... Really well written. I'm an unabashed like Molo Solutions stan, um, but I, I really don't think that people understand why I love Molo Solutions so much. And well, tell it's us. because tell. I applied to work there and didn't get hired. Hmm. Okay, now you have me. Keep going. So when I left my previous employer, I, I made a rule that I was going to only apply for companies that I admired personally. Um, you know, I wanted to work for a brand because I, you know, had come from working from a really powerful brand. I wanted to keep that because it, it fuels my passion for storytelling. So I applied to Molo thinking I'd never hear anything back. And I heard something back immediately. Um, and like from the first call with their recruiter, they are a company that focuses on their people. They obsess over it in every interview that you go through. 
they tell you exactly where you are in that process, exactly what's going to happen and exactly what timeline it's gonna happen in and they meet those deadlines. Molo sells themselves to everybody who comes into that company. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that because when you think about being customer experience driven, you have to take a step back and make sure you take care of your people because they're the ones who take care of your customers. You know, the old saying is, you know, if you take care of your people, they'll always take care of your customers. And that's, you know, so that doesn't surprise me one bit, but I will say this, think about, think about what it takes to actually come through on that, to be able to um, tell you where you're on the process, to have great communication and to be able to meet the deadlines that they've set to be able to follow through. It usually requires an investment, uh, overstaffing, oh, you know, extra technology. Um, it requires an intentionality that costs you something, you know, and that, and that, and that left an impression with you. I think that's really critical. I mean, somebody who they didn't hire, but you went through the experience and went, these guys are doing it right. Right. These guys are doing it right. The thing that made me love them is actually why they didn't hire me. And I don't know if I should say this out loud, but the reason I was given that they did not go through and actually hire me because everybody I talked to loved me was that well, I was too you, far away from their office so they were not sure that their culture would be able to support me completely 100% remote. Hmm. And that's yeah. a badass reason not to hire somebody. Yeah. To say that we don't think that you'll be fully immersed in our culture, so like we can't support that yet because we're not used to it and we don't want to make you a test case, that's powerful, man. That yeah. means that they believe in what they are doing and how they do it 100%. Yeah. Why didn't you want to move to Chicago, to Chicago man? Come on to Chicago. <laughs> I, I just bought a house in Stafford. <laughs> I feel you on that. No, I, I would agree with that because I've actually been to Molo's headquarters and I can tell you that, that you know, for them, that was a big part of their success was the culture they created there at Molo. Now, obviously, with the pandemic, it changed that a little bit, but still – that was a big piece of it. You know, they, they leaned in to culture in ways that, you know, a lot of companies that I've, I've, I've seen just have not. So it was I exciting. Commented, you know? I commented on Andrew's post where he put that open letter um, where he's like, you know, this doesn't make us a target. It makes us a problem. And I'm like, I agree. <laughs> I, I agree it. completely. <laughs> you are a threat because have you seen yeah. an unhappy Molo employee? The, the last the last paragraph of that was was really I would I'm gonna say epic it really was like an epic end to a great letter. You should have so. ended it with a with a animated gif of a mic hitting a floor. <laughs> that, that would have been good. <laughs> I agree with that. Hey Tyler, what's going on, man? How you doing? Good. Sorry for joining late. I'm getting caught oh. up here. I'm in Hi. your uh, I'm in your rugby meeting somehow. <laughs> well. My, you're in my rugby meeting? I don't know. It says it said Trey is in a scrum. I was like, well, okay. Oh. Yeah, if, you click well, the, I, if you click I the, was previously. the full link. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but before this, I was in a, in a scrum uh, meeting with, uh, with, with uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, but no, man, glad to have you joined. I mean, you, got, you beat Chris Jolly again. I don't know, you know if that guy's ever going to be back on the show. Semi-typical, so, yeah. It is, it's becoming a trend, that's for sure. Great guys, what's up? Man? I haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? You there? Can you hear us? He's doing well. Doing very well. He's doing, he's doing great. He's doing great. Yeah. He looks like he's sitting, okay. So that desk behind him almost looks like a really big popcorn maker. You see, like the <laughs> I don't know. That's what the first thing I thought of when I saw uh, Greg was the popcorn maker. So glad you're here. It made me Hope jealous you can hear us. Because I thought that's what it was too. Greg, feel free to jump in anytime if you if you if you can hear us, buddy. But uh, good to see you as well. All right. So listen. So along the lines of M and A, I got a little poll that I'm going to launch. Make sure that you guys can participate in this. And uh, we're going to listen to, I guess we're listening to Luke Bryan, um, who some say is not country, uh, but uh, but he he's, uh, he's this is a decent song, Ways. So go ahead and take this poll real quick. We'll talk a little bit about M&A moving forward. Did you guys see, by the way, that Craig Fuller, I don't know if you guys follow Craig Fuller on Twitter. Freight Alley is his Twitter handle. But he put on there that there's a huge announcement that's going to be made soon, and then he dropped it. And I felt I felt like I was back in the 1980s watching a sitcom and they just did the to be continued. Now I got to wait a week 
to find out what it is. Like we just can't, you know, I can't even survive in this era, you know, doing that. It's just not. The people are paying attention. Cool. I was going to say, they will yeah. come back to see exactly games. what he says. I know he's, they're good. I mean, these people are good. They got us. They totally wrote this in. Now I'll totally think about this. When's it going to drop? I better pay attention. So now I'm obviously watching everything else he says on Twitter. So uh, pretty genius marketing strategy, Craig Fuller. You got me. You got me. But we'll see what happens with that. So yeah, go ahead and finish this poll and then we'll mm-hmm. chit chat about it. Yeah, I've heard some rumblings of some big ones coming, but I'm, I'm very I curious know. to see what it is. I know. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, I, so here's something interesting. So I have um, I, I have this thing from like four years ago where I would do some consulting uh, gigs, where, but it was like one hour where they would want to know about an industry. And I always knew that an M&A was coming whenever I got a lot of requests for a certain part of the industry. Like they'd say, we want to talk to you about load boards. And that was like right before Truck Stop got acquired by Iconic. Right. So I've, I've kind of learned in the last week. Yeah. I've kind of learned that anytime those pop up and I don't even have time to do them anymore. So I haven't done one in probably two years. But as I start to see those creep up, I go, mm, so I'm going. To, and the one <laughs> I got, the ones I got recently were TMS. Ah. So I'm like, McLeod, um, Ascend, Turbo. Like I'm wondering like who's, you know, who's on the, who's on the block? Um, who's, who's, uh, who's for sale? I don't know. You can always That's tell sure. by the way, how serious those people are and like how, how far they are in negotiations by how much you tell them your hourly rate is in order to talk to them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. If you uh, give them so a really high hourly, post- hourly rate and they're like, perfect, that's fine. They're like, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I used to do it like really cheap because it's like, oh, it's a phone call. What do I care? Now I charge yeah, like no, a no, really yeah. high hourly rate. That's and right. You see how much up, they really like, want to talk. <laughs> oh, you're serious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, it's good. All right, so let's talk about this. So question number one, how many more deals will be announced before the end of the year? So most of you think one or two, uh, two of you think three to five, six to 10, nobody more than 10. I tend to fall on that either three to five or six to 10 category, which I know sounds like a lot, but think about how many that we've heard about just in the last you know, two to three months. Um, and we're coming towards the end of the year. I think it's going to be in that three to five category. That's, that's my guess. I'm going to, I'm going to put my chips down on three to five, um, but we'll, you know, we'll see what happens with that. But mostly well, think one to two. We know we're getting at least one with, with Fuller. I mean, I know that's why I didn't put zero because I knew that zero was not an answer. So it's um, at least one. Coyote Logistics has been really quiet lately. I know. We'll see. Well, I mean, I, it's, it's going to be something. Under the UPS something. umbrella, though, right? Under the UPS umbrella, but I think that they're actually working to, to kind of split that off. I don't know. I, oh, I, don't, I don't know. I think there's <laughs> I think there's some I think there's some, I think there's some talks about that. But anyways, uh, our question two. Uh, oh, go decent amount of people leave in Coyote, too. So I don't know if they're, mm. they're not the, you know, the. Yeah, you know, what we'll whatever they whatever they used to be, you know. We'll have to see. And you know, with some of these, I mean, some of these companies are public, but some most of them are, are still privately held. So you can't look at like, you know, who's selling off shares or buy, or you can't look at some of that information, which I think is always fascinating when you look at publicly traded companies and how the main, main shareholders are either selling or buying, you know, right before or after an event. So um, we'll see about that. All right, question two: Who benefits most from these acquisitions? The majority of you think stakeholders, five out of eight. Uh, two of you think the customers do. I think we talked about that a little bit with like ArcBest. I mean, their customer base is definitely going to benefit from that for sure. Uh, their competitors. Do you guys know why I put that on there? Because bad press. <laughs> People leaving. Mergers kill a lot of brands. That's right. That's right. You know, from, from think about it from a from a, um, a recruiting standpoint, from a customer acquisition standpoint. I mean, when a, when one of your brands gets acquired, the first question you ask as a customer is. Are they going to be there for me? Are they going to be the same? What's going to change, right? And same thing from a recruiting standpoint. So sometimes competitors can benefit greatly from an acquisition. Um, I, th- I think about this. Think about when Algex, so Algex TMS provider, when they were acquired uh, by Descartes three, four years ago, right? You know what Descartes did? They stopped putting money towards investment in R&D and towards support. They bought the platform for other reasons, than to have a great TMS. <laughs> and have you heard of Algex at all in the last two years? No, no. Literally TMS zero. providers. I've never they're, heard of them. They're, they're, well, there you go. Their competitors um, benefited greatly from that, right? The owner benefited greatly, Tom. He benefited, Tom Hines, he, he benefited greatly. And other competitors actually benefited greatly. Um, the carriers, 
you know, curious about that, you know, from a curious standpoint, if everybody said no, one of you said other. So who am I forgetting? Nico would say. Uh, I said other uh, because I think it depends completely on the reason for the merger. Like I mentioned, Coyote Logistics has been really quiet. Um, they could be working on an acquisition. They could be about to be acquired by somebody else or anything could be happening when a company is quiet. But when you have a merger or an acquisition, it depends on why the acquisition started. Like going back to Molo, he said that, uh, you know, him and the guy from ArcBest sat down and talked about all the reasons this would not work and all the reasons it shouldn't happen and then started working back from there. So, yeah. you know, when you have somebody who takes over a smaller company or the same size company, and they're really concerned about making sure that the cultures between the two companies match beforehand, I think that the carriers and the customers that report to both brands are going to be, are going to make out. So but your other was you, more of like multiple people, not just one segment. Well, I think it's only either the carriers and the customers or the competitors. Yeah, it's probably not. Yeah, it's probably not. A, that, but I'm saying there's more than one answer here from your perspective. So that makes sense. All right, you know question what? three, which, oh yeah, go ahead. Go ahead John. Oh, it just always scares me because, I mean, it wasn't too long ago when all of these um, investors were going after all the trucking companies, right? Everybody's sucking in as many trucking companies as they possibly can. And if you look at those names, uh, they're all gone. All of those guys, as soon as they pull that money out, there's no more operating um, revenue. So there, I mean, that, yeah. that's the end of the line for them. I don't think that happens with brokerages because it's a little bit different model. It's not so asset heavy. Right. But right. it definitely is one of those things that was recent history that I think we all probably remember if we were in the industry at that time. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. But yeah, I think you're right. The brokerage model is so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so light on assets and liabilities that just a different, it's a different plate. It's a much better, I think, portfolio um, uh, company to have. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Last question three, which segment within transportation will the next MA deal include majority of you think it's going to be technology. And I think that's probably true. I mean, that'd be my default answer every time. Um, but you just never know. I think somebody's kind of surprised you. I put media in there because I'm amazed at, I've been learning a lot from Craig Fuller from Freight Waves about the value of having a media company, even as a transportation company or any type of, you know, technology provider, the ones who are winning, like HubSpot acquired a media company, you know, they're a technology provider. Uh, just understanding the value of a media company from a messaging standpoint, social media standpoint, marketing standpoint, how valuable it is. I'm curious if that'll happen, but I agree with most of you. It's going to be probably technology. That seems to make the most sense. So, uh, so we'll go from there. Megan, welcome. Thanks for joining. Uh, you're muted, but that's all right. You can unmute. Hi. Uh, fellow St. Louisian, go Cardinals. Uh, just in case everybody is not aware, the Cardinals have won 18 out of their last 19, are the hottest team in baseball, and couldn't come at a better time. Let's go. Now, think about no, this. A month ago, a month ago, I was at a game. It was like a third full because they were out of the playoffs. They're, they had like a 1.5% chance of making the playoffs. And then this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right in the middle of the week, every night, completely full. Winning takes care of everything, people. That's the moral of the story. Winning takes care of absolutely everything. So, Megan, how you doing? I'm great. Happy it's Friday and Q3 is behind us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And the weather's getting mm, perfecto. So very excited about that. We talked about that at the beginning. So it's St. Louis weather this time of year. Cannot beat it. Leaves are going to start changing color soon. It's going to be awesome. So yep. exactly. glad you could join us. Thanks for Thank coming. You. It's good. We also have my man Greg rolling in. Greg, what's up, buddy? How are you? Hey, doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. Doing good. Greg, we have an announcement to make, don't we? Uh, we do, I guess. We do. I mean, I, we, I should have been more prepared, huh? It, it hasn't. It hasn't been announced yet, is what I'm saying, right? I mean, we we still. Have, oh, I mean, correct. we don't have to make it. We don't have to make it today. We could let everybody hold on for a week to think about it, just like Craig did with me. We could just say hey, a big announcement coming, and then we could just do it next week, or we could we could do it now. I don't know. What do you think? Do now. Well, I, do now. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, at, this, at this point, we're kind of committed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we we are committed. We are committed. Although so, speaking um, of being committed, I don't know that. Um, you're committed yet financially. I'm not, I'm not committed financially yet. You have, that's absolutely correct. And I, uh, that's on me. 
Um, because I, I got I got to get that done. It's been a busy week. I've been on the road like all week. Yeah. I just it's been crazy. But anyways, we have do have an announcement, and that is we are taking word on the street uh, to a um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go to a race. We're gonna we're all gonna participate in a uh, tough mutter um, in April in St. Louis, Missouri, and we are inviting anybody who wants to join us to um, start thinking about that. Uh, you can participate by being a part of it. You can just fly in and be a part of it. We're going to make a weekend of it. It's in April. We're going to send out some details on that. Um, but we're really excited about that. Raquel Paquette says, I think she's committed. She might be committed. I don't know. She's, she's already talked about it as well. But we're going um, to have a little fun. We're going to have a little, little Word on the Street weekend. I have no idea what's going to happen. It's going to be a blast. Um, we'll get the information out there. So, again, you can sign up to be on our team for the event. Or you can just make plans to come in and hang out and come support us and cheer us on. A little rah rah. We could always use that out there while we're climbing under, you know, electrical lines that uh, can execute or electric. You don't climb us. under. Maybe them. you run through them. You run through them. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> oh gosh, what what am I committing to? You no, will gonna be, get shocked. It it's is. gonna be. It's gonna be. You no, know, it can't be any worse than this. So when I back like back in my youth pastor days, probably twelve years ago, fifteen years ago, um, we took the kids paintballing. All right. We had a great time. We were paintballing. And then the guy running the place said, hey, listen, so most youth groups, when they come out, the, we, we line all the kids up on the side and the youth leaders just run through the middle and see if the kids can hit them. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, I had welts in places that I should not have welts. Because when you're running, you're starting to expose, like, parts of your legs that you shouldn't, you know, inside and places that are just really bad. Like, you, you're running, your arm comes up. You're getting hit right here, you know, by a paintball. Oh my gosh, it was miserable. So I'm, you know, this can't be much worse than that, but maybe it will be. I don't know. Electrocution sounds pretty bad. Well, as I say, Greg, you said that it's like a first time kind of thing, right? So we'll all, all have to run through it. You get to go around. Yeah. Well, if, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was going to leave that part out. He was. So they, they, We're do, gonna get they do say that, you know, if it's your first, at the beginning, there's this big rah rah, and the, the guy usually will go over and he says, and if it's your first time here, you're supposed to run through it. I, I ran through it. I've done a couple of them. I, I, I still run through it. It's uh... Greg's going to be at the end of the line. And after <laughs> we all go through, he's going to just tiptoe around while we're all recovering. No, if, you know? if we do want to do it, there's a, a way that you do it with a team where you lock arms and that way everybody gets less, shocked. Um, right. But uh, is, it, usually... is, it, is it, does it distribute the shock? Does it make it less? Does it make I don't it know. More? My team has never been willing to do that. So <laughs> 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 every man for himself, just go, um, but yeah, no, it's so, so yeah, I, I put the link for the, uh, the event on the, in the chat, we, in the chat. Cool. Uh, and I also put a link for the, um, the team, um, the, the team does not have a password anymore. I was able to make it public. So anybody wants to join, it's called the street crew. Um, you know, essentially awesome. it's, uh, we we're doing the nine mile, uh, we are doing first mud on Saturday. So that yeah. is, I, I mentioned it to Trey and, and Raquel, like that, is, that'll be the best $15 you spend all year is to pay the extra little bit to go first so that the, the course isn't <laughs> up. But, no, that is. Yeah, that'll be it, great. It, it should be a fun time. Nate, Pardon? Poor Nate's wanted a golf tournament this whole time, and then this is how we reward him. We're like, we'll run and get <laughs> bruised up. And everything. <laughs> well, it's, it's fun. It's something to do. It pushes you outside your comfort zone for sure, and it definitely is something to uh, kind of keep you going throughout yeah. the, the winter months to try, you know, with this one being in April, to try and, you know, stay in some sort of shape. Um, also, you know... Uh, I, I go into a little bit in the little note for the team. We're not looking to break any speed records. So, you know, do not <laughs> exactly. feel like you need to be, you know, running eight minute miles for, for 10 miles, It's whatever. It, and we're going through, we're doing it as a team. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a great experience. Um, and, and like, like I said, it's something that I, I got into a little bit ago, um, you know, I, a, a couple of years ago, and it really does push you outside of your comfort zone. And at the end of the day, it's something that's silly and fun. And it, it really is just meant to be, you know, it, I can go outside and, and run, you know, however many miles and in, in my neighborhood, this is stuff that I couldn't do on my own. Like they make these big right. contraptions and obstacles that you get to go yeah. over and then you finish it and you look back and you're like, wow, I, I did something pretty impressive. Well, and the cool thing too, is that like, you know, you think about nine miles and you go, oh my gosh, that's a long ways, but it's broken up by these obstacles. So it really just kind of feels like a series of, you know, little jogs and then you do something fun together and yeah. then you do it again. And it goes, it goes a lot faster than, than you might think. I did one of these, I did a, uh, I did a rugged maniac, which is 
only three miles and 25 obstacles. So you can imagine over the course of three miles, 25 obstacles, you're not going that far. Then you get to the next obstacle, you know, so it goes, it goes a lot faster than you might think. Um, but we're going to do that. We're going to have fun flying on Friday. If you're not local to St. Louis, um, we'll come up with some activities on Saturday afternoon and fly home on Sunday or Saturday night, whatever you want to do, but it'll be a fun weekend. We might even be able to try to attach this to a charity and raise some money um, and, uh, and coalesce around that. So we're still working on some of the details, but the link is there so you can check it out. Yeah. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk more about it as we get closer, but it's six months away. So we got plenty of time to, uh, to plan for it, but it'll be fun. And of course we get a chance to see a lot of you in person that have, we've never seen. So put that on your calendar and uh, hopefully you guys can, can join us. It'll be a great time. Yeah. Aaron. Do you have to be fit at all? Like it is a nine mile race. You probably should be able to be, you probably should be at least a little fit. But you can start is, walking and yeah, kind of move yeah. in that direction, you, you know, and, I mean, and, yeah, and there's no like time limits or anything like that. It's yeah. But yeah, it is, it is a physical challenge for sure. Yeah. Um, but if you start, but if you start walking now, you know, uh, it's again, we got six months, so uh, there's plenty of time to, uh, you know, get in a position where you feel more comfortable to be able to do that kind of thing. But, you could a hundred percent do it. We got faith. Totally. Yeah, totally. Maybe yeah. we could do another one of those that's... weight loss challenges. <laughs> Uh, we, we should, I mean, just because we're coming up on holiday season and we know what happens. So we should do that. So here's what I've done. I've committed to only wearing small polos because that forces me to rem remember that I can't gain any more weight. So, you know, when I'm that thinking about medium. eating, this is a, this is a small, so, uh, <laughs> instead of a medium, it's becoming a medium. That's right. Um, but that's actually been quite helpful to do that. Is I'm, I'm just like, well, I'm, I'm wearing smalls only now, so I better not gain any weight. So anyways. It's not a bad idea, Aaron, that we do a little something to help each other out. It'd be pretty cool, actually, to see, you know, some progress over the next three or four months and then be able to come together and uh, talk about it. So very excited to uh, to do that. And this is all Greg's idea. So thank you, Greg, for bringing it up. I appreciate you. it. Yeah, and thank yeah, you for choosing cool. the location. It's like in my backyard. I know. Isn't that wonderful? Well, uh, so you've got no reason not to, right? I'm not competing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. Even if you show up, it's well, yeah, just it, fine. Like we're gonna have the only the shape I'm in is round. <laughs> they, they do have sort of a, they call it Mutter Village, where they, they get some music going. There's a bunch of beers around. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. It, it, you, you spend a couple hours out on the course, but then a lot of the fun really is just kind of hanging out in the, the yeah. water village for a little bit. Those people might have the most fun that day, but Probably. the rest of us will just feel you well, know, they won't satisfied to finish. <laughs> they won't get shocked and they can drink and they can, you know, cheer and celebrate. So yeah. don't everybody sign up for that. Some people, we need some people to sign up for the actual event. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I will show up with bells on and be your cheerleader, but I'm not going through the race. No, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be, and, and it'll be just fun to see everybody, which will be, which will be great. So, Awesome. All right. Well, let's transition real quick to the next topic. As you guys know, I had the opportunity to be in D.C. this week for the TIA Policy Forum flying event, which was uh, canceled last year uh, because of COVID. And this year we actually had the chance to uh, get together and to go and meet with um, congressional representatives, uh, both uh, House representatives and senators, um, uh, which was really fascinating. Had, uh, I, before I talk any more about that, uh, I'm going to shoot out another poll. Uh, you guys can take real quick talking about political activism in the supply chain. I learned a lot this week and I wanted to share some with you, but I want to find out what you guys know before I do that. So go ahead and take that poll real quick. It's a country music day, everybody. So we're currently listening to uh, Like a Lady from Lady Antebellum. So there you go. You got that. Aaron, you like that? It's just for you. I'm serious. No, I was laughing <laughs> at Nika's post. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> you better have little bells on that'll be great that'll be great oh goodness <clears throat> hmm. on a side note my wife said that if we pay off our credit card we can join a golf club i have never been saving money like i've been saving money this she's like do you want to go i'm like no 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 let's walk to church we don't need to drive let's just walk you know, just smart. whatever she, she knows your whatever, motivation, <laughs> whatever it takes. I mean, seriously, it's taken her like 16 years, but this is the, it. this is it. I mean, if she wants anything, this is the way to go, you know? So yeah, I've never, I've never, I'm like, let's sell some, sell some stuff. What can we sell? You know, <laughs> Garage so, let's get it done. What do we, what do we got? What do we got in here? We don't need anymore, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. She's got my motivation for sure. All right. Let's finish this up here in a little bit and then we'll, 
This is five questions. Gosh, that's a lot of questions. Sorry, everybody. I don't know what I was thinking. Making you guys read a lot. Megan, are you going to go to any playoff games? Did you guys uh, do that thing? You're just going to watch. Um, we. Ha- I would like to. I haven't been to a Cardinals game in ages. Um, I would love to go. Without <laughs> like, like kind of, I don't want to say too far. We live like 45 minutes. Yeah, so do we. From downtown, so it's not crazy far, but I would love to go to a playoff game. It I'll makes love- a weekday game a, a late game because you don't get out till 10, 10, 30, and you got to drive home and. You know, you don't go to bed till midnight, so I don't like that. But yeah, I can't. I can't do that. That's I. Yeah. yeah. Um, and well, hopefully, they win the wild card, and you know, if there's several games at home. And I think the game home games will be on the weekend this time if they make it. So, you know, that's actually good. Yeah. Well, that the be- first two games will be on the road, and then they'll be back. So that'll be good. All right, cool. Shutting it down. Three, two, one. We're done with that. Let me show the results. Question number one. Which organizations are you familiar with? Most of you familiar with TIA, that's great. Um, they are one of the <clears throat> primary trade association organizations for freight brokerage um, and uh, is located right in Alexandria, Virginia. So they have um, a great access to, um, to Congress and to the legislative process, which is great. OIDA, based in my hometown of Kansas City, Missouri, actually just outside of Kansas City in Green Valley, Oak Grove area. In Kansas City, Missouri, I drive past it every time I come here. I'm in Kansas City today, by the way. I'm at my parents' house, which is where I got the board background. Um, IANA, which is the uh, Intermodal Association um, that uh, has their annual conference in Long Beach, California. So it's a great one to go to. We just went to TCA in Vegas. Um, that's the Trucking uh, Truckload Carrier Association. ATA is American Trucking Association. A lot of you know them. CSCMP is probably, I'm just going to say, one of the best shows that you could attend from a networking event. Like, Great people, a lot of people at that show. And historically, we'll see how it is moving forward, but a great organization. Um, international Supply, uh, 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 I think it's International Supply Chain Management and then the Association of Supply Chain Management, ASCM. There's actually quite a few uh, organizations in the industry, um, all kind of with their, their own, some are educational, uh, some are more best practices and standards, and some are lobbying. Um, T, uh, TIA is a lobbying organization along with the other, they do education as well, but, but lobbying is one of their, their big, uh, avenues. And if you've never been to a policy form flying, which looking down at question five, seven of you have not been to that, I would highly recommend doing that at some point. Not only do you get to see the process in action and see what the TI PAC does, um, but you also get to meet with a lot of really cool executives from um, from companies around the uh, in the industry. I uh, rode to the airport with Aaron Van Zeeland from Schneider, and we had a great 45 minute chat just just talking. I would never have had that opportunity. I got to uh, sit down and talk with uh, Omar Singh at Surge Transportation and uh, some other people in the industry. Bob Easterfield from from CH Robinson came up and said, "Hey, we're getting started with you guys." It's like you know whatever. We just had a great conversation. Uh, you know, just so many good people and the people at CI as well. Ann Rinke, um, Mike Riccio, who uh, you know is the chairman of the of the board. It was just neat to be in that room and to be with a lot of those great people. So I would encourage you guys to attend if you uh, if you haven't. Um, who's the one who has attended? Who has who's already gone? Anybody already gone? Just one person said yes. Well, maybe not. Maybe, right, Diana. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Diana. Maybe she's bouncing out right now. Uh, question two: Have you ever participated in the legislative process within the transportation industry? Most of you again said no. One said yes. Uh, have you ever contributed to an organization who? engages in political lobbying, some PAC money. Looks like half and half, half and half. So that's interesting. Um, I, I typically don't contribute to PACs. I'm not a huge fan of PACs in general, but when it comes to uh, some of the things that we need in our industry, it, it, it's starting to make a little bit more sense now after having seen the process and what they're trying to accomplish. It's pretty, pretty interesting. I wonder um, yeah, go ahead. Has- is anybody, well, I actually answered yes to this question because I just uh, became a member of uh, Women in Trucking. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, which one. I wonder if people look at that as a political uh, <coughs> committee. Because, I mean, they, um, are, they do so, have so, an agenda, obviously. but Right. So a lot of organizations will have the organization and then they'll have a PAC as well. So you, like TIA is the organization and then they have the TIA PAC, which is really designated for lobbying. For political and some of some of them have some don't i don't know if women are trucking has a pack or if there are just more they do have a pack okay yeah, they do. um so yeah i mean there's there's uh you know there's there's a lot of i mean every little trade every one of these in uh industry 
um, trade uh, organizations has what they're trying to get, you know, Congress to do. So it makes sense. You know, they're, they're trying to take care of their members, advance things forward and make sure that legislatively things are in the best possible position for them to, to benefit. So it makes sense. Yeah, actually, uh, realizing that mm -hmm. uh, WIT had a PAC was the biggest reason I did uh, become a member, specifically yeah. because I think that their message is double fold. Like one, it's bringing women into the trucking industry, which I mm -hmm. think you really need if you want, you know, drivers, you know, it, any, any source of drivers in the industry is great. But also, I think that the fact that it is a female focused in uh, organization also furthers a transformation of the message of what the trucking industry is. Yeah. Yep. I, I can see that. I mean, I you know, and what they're doing is great because you're right. There's just, you know, there's not a lot of women in trucking overall and um, you know, the organizations that tend to really thrive have, um, great diversity when it comes to uh, viewpoints and um, and things like that. So what they're doing is is uh, it's pretty cool. That's for sure. Um, okay, next question. And by the way, Megan put a really cool picture in the chat box if you guys want to take a look at it. Question four: Would you ever want to be a political lobbyist for the transportation industry? I put this question in there because I thought about it when I was down the hill. Like, could I do this full time? Like, would I would I enjoy? you know, being here and going to the Hill and scheduling these meetings and because the process is very, it's very uh, laborious. It's very uh, slow. It's, 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 um, it's difficult um, to get things moving through. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> most of you say no. Five were like, no chance. Two or one of you said yes. And two said, not sure. Who's the one that said yes. Who, who, who would be interested in that? Oh, we should have guessed. I'll that. try anything once. <laughs> we should have. Yeah. Just for the story. I would do it we, just for the story. Who are the two fence sitters? Who are the, who are the ones that are kind of, eh, I don't know. Who put not sure? It's a hard no for me. It's a hard no for Coleman. All right. So it wasn't, yeah. wasn't you for sure. All right. I think that I would be, um, after, after I was there, I, I think I would be a yes. And the reason is um, for the, the relationships and the networks that are built. Um, you, know, you get the opportunity to actually influence something or change something. And I think that's a neat part of our world is when you are in a position where you can actually change the way things are done. That's pretty cool, pretty powerful, and pretty neat to see. You really want to see how the sausage is made, though? Ooh. I kind of do, because I'm kind of like Nico. I oh. kind of want to see it. Now, I don't know if I'd like it or if I'd want to do it, but I kind of want to see it the first time. Oh, no. Um, no. Inside Just the room. It's enjoy like, it, like, Dairy Queen. Get it? Get it. <laughs> don't it's like one of my. One of my favorite songs in Hamilton is, um, you know, um, in the room where it happened, you know, where they were talking about that, you know, how, you know, there, I think there's a part of, of, of you that want, just wants to, not everybody, but of me in particular, wants to be in the room. I want to be at the table. Even if I'm not speaking much, I want to, I want to be there. I want to see it happen. And I probably, I probably would talk too much, but I definitely would like to just be in the room and see, you know, see how it all happened. That would be really fascinating to me. Meshach, what's up, buddy? See, Meshach, you did it again. We're talking politics. You have a lot of really cool stories from working in local politics or in Minneapolis. You're always right on time, man. Always on time. <laughs> His senses were just tingling. He's like, oh, time to go. We're well, talking politics. I got to jump on. <laughs> Yeah, we did a lot of stuff when I worked at XRS and Zeta. It was a lot of we had we had a guy who was there all the time out in DC. It was interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. And, I was, and and you missed it. I was just sharing that I was in TI uh, in DC for the TIA Policy Forum, so I got to I got to get a little bit of a view of it. Here's the scary thing about DC. You guys want to know what the scary thing is about DC? It's ran by a bunch of twenty somethings, like literally ran. By 20 something. So you got like Marco Rubio, right? He's like in his upper 40s, maybe lower 50s. I don't know how old he is, right? But you go to his office, it's all guys that are 23, 24, 25, and they're the ones that are studying the the, the different issues and you know, writing and or approving or whatever the legislation. The the senator or representative is in many ways just that, a representative of what's happening. They're not actually in the trenches doing some of this work. It was fascinating and a little scary. <laughs> kind of crazy to see that um, change into the guard you know well it, i mean it is but you know these these young guys are i mean they're super smart um you know they've all had good college careers they all want to do this down the road i mean this is the way that they're going to learn i mean so they are there i mean it is like thrown into the fire figure this out 
but they're really smart. They ask good questions. You know something else about them uh, is they they get into these sweet jobs by, uh, you know, interning in causes. So, you know, some of the people that you would meet in these, you know, fly-in meetings and stuff like that, you know, the people supporting these events Mm -hmm. are going to be the people who are in the senators and representatives office in a couple years anyway. Yeah, that's true. And what's interesting is that a lot of the uh, a lot of the assistants, the, the legislative uh, um, assistants that are with the congressmen and women and the senators are not from the states or the, um, the, the um, you know, whatever districts that their representative is from. A lot of them are from different states or whatever, but they had a connection. They went to a college in Florida, so therefore they got connected with the Florida political party and all that. Um, but it's, it's really interesting. And there's kind of a trade that goes on. So a lot of these uh, guys will be like, They'll work for a senator for a while. And then when that term is up, then they'll go work for a representative. And it's almost like they're they're kind of shuffling back and forth and getting different experiences. So it's not like one person, one rep. It's like one person. And then where else, who else can I work with? Can I clerk for the Supreme Court? I mean, there's a lot of opportunities there and they move around to get these uh, these opportunities. But it's really it's really quite fascinating. Because but again, the turnover what I, is also high. Well, the turnover is high because it's a hard job. No doubt about it. But I will say this. They ask really good questions. Like I kind of, you know, you walk in with a 24 year old who's asking you about the trucking association and why this is important to have safety standards for selecting carriers. And you might think that they would just kind of gloss over it, but they had really good questions. Um, I was, I was very impressed with the whole process and how it all, how it all worked. So because they love a story. Well, everybody loves the story, Nico. I mean, let's just be honest. Everybody <laughs> loves the story. So no, Meshach, what's how uh, I bought the domain storytelling monkeys? I just have to get the word story <laughs> you do. into you gotta every keep, conversation. You got to keep putting that out there. All right. So Meshach, tell us what's new in Michigan before we uh, jump into this week in pictures. Uh, Minnesota. Um, um, oh, I'm sorry, Minnesota. I'm no, sorry. no yes, problem. Right. I mean, I'm just uh, <clears throat> it's close. doing my it's crazy. Uh, Northern uh, starts with an M. I, throw the whatever. boat. Uh, straight, straight, crazy startup culture, you know, end of the quarter, just madness it's uh, very interesting working on a startup that has an entirely new category where people are like i'm used to dealing with 80 to 90 percent of like a risk that is kind of unacceptable and it's funny yeah. you know the whole adage you can lead the horse to water but they're like well wait a minute you know like even aaron and i were talking not that long ago and she's like wait a minute you offer what <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> even though we had like been on third thursdays a lot it's you know, just figuring out how yeah. to make something that that is kind of obvious, but not something you think about obvious is I think one of life's great challenges. The weather is amazing. It's mm-hmm. definitely the fall colors are coming in and uh, it's good to see you all. This is like one of my favorite parts of the week. And I try to get in as soon as I can uh, after meetings, after meetings. Well, appreciate you jumping in. And you did miss, by the way, that we are doing a word on the street, rugged maniac in St. Louis in April. We're going to coalesce around this kind of form a team, maybe even uh, come up with a charity in a way to, donate some money and have a great little weekend together in St. Louis. So uh, be on the lookout for that. The link is in the chat in case you want to check it out. And if you don't want to participate in the event, it's a nine mile obstacle course race. And we're not, again, race is a, it's a loose term. We're not trying to break any records. We may not even time the thing, who knows, but we're going to compete and have a good time. And for those who either aren't able to, or aren't aren't interested in competing, that it's just going to be a, yeah, nine, yeah. nine, but it's broken. It's broken up, Misha. It's like broken up by a bunch of stuff. So it's like it's like a bunch of little like you know like seven block jogs, and then you do something, and then you run another seven blocks, and then you, you do it again. So it's almost be worse than just it. straight nine miles. <laughs> no, it'll be fun. Uh, I'm in. The I'm in. Yeah. Break it up. I'm <laughs> telling you, they break it up. No, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. So with that said, let's close out the week with a little this week in pictures. I have to say, a lot has happened. Since last week, since, uh, you know, uh, Bain jumped in, I jumped in at the last minute and whatever. It's been a crazy week. So let me just tell you what happened to start off the week. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. What started off the week is that Saturday last week, we sponsored and participated in the Trinity Logistics Golf Tournament up in Bridgeville, Delaware. If you're not sure where that is, don't even look on a map. It's it's not even there. Like, it's hard to find. It's out in the middle of stinking nowhere, but it was beautiful country. Uh, Trinity Logistics is based up there, one of our customers. But here's, I got to tell you the story. So uh, my, I was going to take my wife because we didn't have a fourth person. My wife plays golf. I was like, hey, why don't you come with us? She's like, sure. So uh, get her companion pass on Southwest, whatever. We show up to the airport on Friday and they say, I'm sorry, ma'am, your, your, your ticket's been canceled. And we're like, what do you mean it's been canceled? She's like, I don't know. Do you guys do anything? I'm like, well, we moved our 
our return flight from Sunday to Saturday, but we didn't cancel anything. Well, I'm sorry, it's canceled. I'm like, well, do we still have the return flight? She goes, oh yeah, the return flight's still there. I'm like, who, what is going on at Southwest? Why do you keep a return flight, but not give us the outbound? I doesn't make a lot of sense. So finally they got it figured out. Tammy made the flight, which is great. We get to Baltimore. It's like 1030 at night. All right. Got a car rental reservation with hers. Take the shuttle over while she's getting the bags. I get there. There is a mass of people in the Hertz area. I'm like, this doesn't look good. Um, they ran out of cars. So they took the reservations, but they ran out of cars, which reminds me a lot of the Seinfeld episode. And if you haven't seen that, it's a great clip on YouTube. The car reservation episode on Seinfeld. It, it epitomizes exactly what we're dealing with. Like they took the reservation. They just couldn't keep the reservation because <laughs> there were no cars. So people have been waiting three hours and they were just hopeful that somebody would bring a car in at midnight. I'm like, no way. I left. I'm out of here. So now <clears throat> I got a real dilemma. And this is my, uh, my, my stepdad here, just in case you're wondering. But now I got a real dilemma because the tournament's two hours from the hotel and it's on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We we're going to drive in the morning. Now I don't have a car. So I go on to Twitter and I'm like, Twitter versus somebody help me. How do I get a car in time? So they're like, you should use Turo. I'm like, okay, never used Turo before. I go and I research it. I create an account. I book a car. I go to bed. I wake up, cancel. They cancel the reservation. It's 5.30. It's like, I feel like I'm like, 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 a, like a one of those, those races, you know, like uh, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, show. Like, how am I going to get to Bridgeville, Delaware in two hours, right? <clears throat> so finally we go on Hertz, we make another reservation and we say, you know what? There's got to be people with early flights to bring cars back. There's just got to be. So at 5.30, we go back to the Hertz place. The lady says, uh, well, it'll take like an hour to process. There's nobody there, just, just us. It's going to take like an hour to process. You know, I don't know when we're going to have a car available. I'm like, whatever. I walk outside to the garage. I'm seeing cars come back in. One of them's an SUV, which we need because we have golf clubs, right, to carry. I walk back in. I'm like, man, there's an SUV out there that's returned. You don't need to clean it. I just need the keys. You could tell that she was so frustrated with the whole process. She's like, fine. She handed me the keys and we <laughs> left. I mean, the car wasn't clean. We didn't care. We were gone. So we finally had a car. We made the tournament. This is Ryan Mann, who's our director of lean marketing on the left. He does a great job with our, uh, all of our clients on, on marketing side. This is Maria Mantia. She's the implementation manager for lean sales down in Bogota, Colombia. We flew her up because it cost the same to fly her up as anybody else. And she played golf in college. Ringer. Let me tell you, folks. <laughs> she was amazing. Um, she drove four par fours. Drove four par fours. So uh, that was pretty exciting for us. I know. Amazing. Um, so that happened. And then we finally did make it back home. Uh, all is well. That ends well. But it was kind of a crazy, you know, a crazy time. So that was pretty cool. So that was sad. This is, we're at Saturday, folks. We're only on Saturday. Um, obviously, the Ryder Cup, the USDA team dominated 19 to 9. Very excited for that. And of course, I never understand why they have a press conference after the Ryder Cup, after all these guys are completely slammed. I mean, all these guys were hammered. <laughs> And they did a press conference, so some pretty pretty funny comments came out of the whole thing, including Dustin Johnson. Uh, so if you didn't watch that, that's worth watching. I mean, those also, are always um, the best press conferences, though. Oh my Anytime gosh, on was... like a parade for a championship, it's always that one or two guys that probably had a few too many. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. And I think that the reporters know it because they're asking questions just to get them to say stupid stuff. And a lot of times they do it. But anyway, so it was pretty exciting to see, it, see them win and win dominantly. It's turning over a new leaf for the USA Ryder Cup team. They're going to win a lot moving forward. Um, also this, so last week, or I'm sorry, this, this past week, Craig Fuller got to be on a couple of new shows. He was on the Today Show. He was on uh, Fox and Friends talking about the, the you know supply chain and the container crisis, cargo ships piling up at the U.S. ports. And so I captured that. I thought that was pretty cool um, to have somebody in our industry really you know um, out there telling everybody why they're not going to get their Christmas gifts uh, if they don't order now, um, which is pretty cool. I got to meet um uh senator shelly moore uh ooh, her last name's kind of interesting capitone maybe uh something like that from west virginia um really really cool to listen to her um it's just neat to hear her story and um i think sometimes you know in the in the, the media crave world that we're in now we see um a lot of uh you know members of congress as celebrities like aoc and some of the others but it's neat to meet somebody from a state like West Virginia, kind of real down to earth, super smart, uh, knows the issues. And um, it's really fun to talk to her. So, of course, I had to take a selfie because that's what I do. Everybody else is getting pictures. I'm like, nope, we're doing a selfie. She was cool. So we had a good time you with that. Have you guys ever noticed that, that Trey Griggs never leaves home without <clears throat> that selfie stick? That I don't do what? 
you don't leave home without that selfie stick, that arm. Well, that that's true. Not only that, <laughs> but I actually have a selfie stick, Rob. That's the crazy part. I didn't take it to this event, but I do have it with me uh, everywhere I go. So, hey, Rob. You know. Yeah. I think what Trey actually does is it's like he has it implanted into his arm, <laughs> like an adamantite like claw, shoots, except for it's a selfie stick. Go, 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 shoots it out of my hand. Exactly. Out, yeah comes right out and you know yeah it's really convenient so it works well it works well although i did have to move a few people from behind like like uh, brent huddle was right behind us and i'm like dude you got to move because the ti pack sign it's got to look good so i literally was like get out of the way man get out of the way but he was good about it he was he's a good friend of mine um uh, this is from one of the uh congressman's office uh representative uh diaz um uh balart uh, this was this is a view from his his balcony which i thought was really cool what a great place to work pretty neat there um, got to go to Marco Rubio's office with Josh Main, my friend from P44, Project 44. He's doing great things in LATAM. So it's pretty neat to, to see that. Didn't get to see Mr. Rubio, but uh, did get to meet with his staff, which was pretty cool. This I, I thought was cool. If you've never been in the basement of the, the, uh, the, the Congress buildings and the Capitol, they have tunnels, which make it easier to go from, from one to the other. And so because of that, this is how they would get people to vote. To, to, to get to the, to the voting uh, um, sessions faster, they would hop on these old cars. They do have golf carts now that they can use. <clears throat> they usually just walk. Um, but this is all underneath the, uh, the Capitol and the, um, the House and, and Senate uh, uh, buildings, office buildings. It's pretty cool. This is a group of us that were out, uh, several, several people you might know, Mark Christos, um, who, Greg, you might know him, uh, David Abel and Omar Singh and uh, John Miller and, of course, Ann Rinke and uh, just a lot of really cool, cool people there. Alex Easy, so Goozy. So um, pretty neat to be a part of that. But as you can see, uh, and I'm short. You know, something I realized this week, I think there's a correlation between successful people and tall people. Uh, and I'm missing out on that for sure. Uh, because everybody, it, this is how I felt in every room. It's like two of us that were short and everybody else was just over six foot. So it was pretty miserable. But, um, and I was wearing a tie. Look at this. Wearing a tie. You're not going to see me in that for a long time, boys and girls. This is Christy Knitchell of Knitchell Logistics, good friend of mine, um, incredible uh, entrepreneur and business leader um, who I had the pleasure of just spending time with as well. So really cool. to, And she's really into rock music. So we had a great time talking about that, which is pretty fun. And then, of course, uh, today, right now, going on right now, it's the infrastructure bill. Nancy Pelosi said there will be a vote today. We'll see if that actually happens. But they <clears throat> are on the move, and we'll see how that goes out. They split the infrastructure bill with their uh, larger package reconciliation bill. So we'll see how that goes and what all goodies are stuffed into that last minute and who gets what they want. That's happening right now. Rob, this is for you, all right? This is why I don't tip drivers. Do you see what's going on here? This is our pizza and chicken wings that we got this week with a piece missing and a chicken wing missing. Uh, I was really, but, but let me tell you this. I did tip this guy four bucks. I want you to know I tipped him $4. All right. And he, you know, ate one of my pieces of pizza and ate one of my chicken pieces. And I had to drive back up there and tell him what happened. Uh, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty crazy, pretty but let me bad. tell you what actually. So when you open that box, so you, that, that piece <clears> is missing. that's what it looks like. Yep. That's exactly right. But let me tell you what so actually you happened. You don't so think that's not that people story. have talked about this no tipping Trey Griggs guy. The word is out. You're on the, you're, 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 coming back to you're on the watch list. Or anything. You're on the watch list. So but, but listen, everybody, listen, this isn't the full story. Let me tell you the full story. The full story is this. That looks like a piece is missing. But what happened is these three pieces got squashed down. So when I went back, I showed him the pizza and he's like, Oh, it just, it just got slid down. He literally moved the pieces back and it was a perfect pizza. So I was so embarrassed. And one of the pieces of chicken fell off the end. They just didn't put another piece on. So that's why I got seven. But both of those things combined made me think that my driver had eaten my food. So anyways, we go back there. They felt bad that I drove all the way back up. They actually remade both items. And so they were really good about it. But Rob, I will let you know that I did tip $4.00 for the guy uh, for delivering the pizza you'll be proud of that um and uh you know so anyway we're all proud so, <laughs> thank you i, I, I appreciate that food, man. i appreciate that and then lastly we're going to end on this today this is george gankus he's one of the top golf instructors in the industry but sometimes he does some crazy things that look a little weird um i took this picture and said caption this uh, on twitter um you know to see what people think about this he's teaching about hip inflection but the picture was just classic i had to take it um, so, you know, if you're learning about golf and a instructor says, hey, hold this styrofoam thing in front of your pelvis, uh, it's, it might be OK. It might actually be just fine. You might really know what they're doing. So it's not like the nine pull at nine. 
<laughs> uh, which was funny because uh, uh, Shooter McGavin on Twitter actually put the, 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 the U.S. team wanted to meet the European team on the ninth hole at night to, to you know commemorate the Ryder Cup. So that joke will never die. It's always good. Hey, listen, everybody, we took five more minutes of your time we wanted to, but thank you so much for showing up. Aaron, great to see you again. Thanks for joining. Great to see all of you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week for Episode 78 of The Word on the Street, powered by Lean Solutions Group. See you guys. Thank you, everyone.